I'll show you a lot of uh, treatment technologies now, and uh, I'll present it this way, that there is something called pre-treatment, and there's something called post-treatment, or <coughs> disinfection. In the cases of uh, bacteria, at least we call it disinfection. Pre-treatment is usually to remove the, the particles. First you remove the particles, then you remove the bacteria, because the bacteria can hide inside the particles, and uh, therefore, it's better to get the particles. They're usually easier, easier to remove. But the disinfecting agents, they're usually not as as effective on the bacteria when they're hiding inside the, the particle. Then I'm also going to show you whether some examples of how to apply it on a household scale and how to apply it on a community scale. And that is uh, most. Uh, methods can be used uh, both places, but of course they look different in, in size and, and so on. The first one is uh, hardly a treatment technology, but there is a way that when you have a river that is uh, contaminated upstream from human settlements, there is a simple way that you can actually take the water. If you make a small well nearby the river, then you can drive the water through the soil here and, and pump it up here. And the general guidelines is, uh, is, is if you, you have to place this well about, this is feet, 10 to 100 feet, 3 to 30 meters away, depending on the size of the river. So you can actually get some pretty clean water from uh, just pumping it there, because then you have the treatment, the filtration through the soil here. And the water will continuously come running from... from uh, from this river, so you can have a uh, river uh, water all the time. It's uh, it's pretty simple and uh, not expensive. If the river, I mean, dries out with time, so you could say the water level would, mm -hmm. in practice, fall to to below here. Uh, you can see from the drawing here. For some time, you would be able to to, to take water also there until it totally dries up. It depends a bit on what, what the system is. You could also make a well, I mean an open open dock well here, that would actually benefit from the river water. Then there's uh, sedimentation. If you have particles in your water, there's the very old uh, household method where you have, for example, three pots here. You take your dirty water, put it in the First bucket, you leave it there for one day, uh, let it settle, then you pour it into the second bottle, day, then you have uh, uh, some less dirty water, because a lot of it has sedimented, and then you, after two days, you pour it into the third one, where you have the, the clean water here, that's, that's the system. It doesn't give you, uh, it's a pre-treatment, so it's removing particles, but definitely not enough uh, bacteria. In the, in the community system, you can have a flow where, where the water is running into a sediment tank here. All the sediments would fall down here, and the clean water would come here. Um, not, not so usable. This is not so uh, much used in uh, alone in a, in a village, but uh, this is from a from a bigger plant. What it, what it looks like in practice here. Something that can be used in the villages is, is something that, for example, Red Cross is uh, promoting a lot. Uh, silver impregnated ceramic filters, where you have a bucket, this is a bucket, and then you have inside a small uh, um, ceramic filter here, which, which has very small holes. And if you put some kind of silver layer on, on top of it, I think it's very little silver, it's not very expensive, uh, then that gives some uh, catalytic uh, uh, killing of the bacteria also. So you can get the drinking water clean here. And on a, on a photo it looks like this. Um, here is the, the pocket, and if you look down into it, you can yeah, you see the ceramic filter here. The particles would form a layer inside, so sometimes you need to wash it uh, inside. I suppose it might clog. Also, you, it would gradually close the small small pores. I mean, this is thousands, millions of small pores, small holes. It may clog, but uh, I think it's made in a way that that is not so so typical. It's going to break before that. Uh, 
uh, sometimes they fall on the floor and then uh, that, that happens often. You use this for as long as you can. Years. If you can, if you don't break it, you can use it for, for years. Um, I would say with most of these treatment methods, I may not be able to mention it every time, you treat only water for drinking or cooking, drinking and, and cooking. Um, because it's water runs slowly through this, a very small hole, so it runs very small, slowly, so you produce small amounts, and uh, usually you don't produce for washing yourself or washing utensils. You only produce the water you need for drinking and cooking. You can wash hands in dirty water. I wouldn't... I wouldn't um, Without soap. No, you should oh, use okay. soap. <laughs> soap is important, but uh, uh, washing hands with dirty water, even with bacteria, I mean, the few... You can, you can survive with a few bacteria. The few that would be left after you clean your water is much better than the million that you have on your little uh, the little peeps that you got from uh, Amos or uh, from someone you shake hands with. So, uh, no, it doesn't matter if it's water for, for the hands. Then uh, the use of chlorine. Chlorine is something that uh, you, it, it's been used for treating water, it kills bacteria, it is not chloride, but it's chloride in an oxidized form, and it kills bacteria very effectively. And the one, uh, one way to apply it is to have such a pot here, where you have a mixture of sand and ble it's called bleaching powder, which is uh, some uh, chlorine in some form, uh, some solid form, and then a bit of uh, sand, gravel here around it, and then you put it into into a water body, and then it will slowly uh, through these small holes down here. It will slowly uh, uh, run out, diffuse out of the of, of the pot and the, into the water. So it will always so it will keep a, a steady level here. And that can be applied in different ways. You can apply it to a to a pond like this. Put it in a corner, or maybe four corners of the pond here, or you can put it into a an open well. In this case, it's made out of a uh, simple plastic uh, waste uh, thing here. But the same thing, you have the powder that is slowly uh, running out of there. Then you can boil the water, as we know. It kills bacteria by boiling. It often uh, you know, requires a lot of uh, energy that is not always available, but, but um, some places that is a good way to do it. Then you can use solar uh, for killing. Also, the UV radiation from the from the sun is killing bacteria uh, together with heat. If you paint it black, I mean this is the, the the effective way to do it. You paint it black on one side, that means the water will be more warm. So the combination of hot water and UV radiation is very effective to treat water and. Um, to make it even more effective, you, you can let it sediment first. So re again, removing the particles, half of the bacteria will also be removed, but that doesn't make any any good to remove only half. But you remove the particles so it will be more effective. The sun can get easily through, and the bacteria cannot hide in the, in the particles here. So in the in the household, it looks like this. You need a bottles. You, you, here, in this case, you just use a bottles with, which, which are not painted, it's still quite effective. Um, as you see, you need to manage a lot of bottles. It's not so easy if you, if you again, or I would say 5 liters per person, so it's 25 liters. It's a lot of bottles you need to manage, and you need two sets, because first you put it on the, here she puts it on, the, on this rack here for, for one day from morning to evening, and then it's clean. It's, it's a one day treatment here. There's also some uh, community uh, size uh, treatment plants here. They're not very common, but 